Chapter 9. Conclusion The first five illustrations in this book show the course of constructive effort in painting. This effort falls into two divisions. One, simple composition, which is regulated according to an obvious and simple form. This kind of composition I call the melodic. Two, complex composition, consisting of various forms, subjected more or less completely to a principal form. Probably the principal form may be hard to grasp outwardly, and for that reason possessed of a strong inner value. This kind of composition I call the symphonic. Between the two lie various transitional forms, in which the melodic principle predominates. The history of the development is closely parallel to that of music. If, in considering an example of melodic composition, one forgets the material aspect and probes down into the artistic reason of the whole, one finds primitive geometrical forms or an arrangement of simple lines which help toward a common motion. This common motion is echoed by various sections and may be varied by a single line or form. Such isolated variations serve different purposes. For instance, they may act as a sudden check, or, to use a musical term, a fermata. Each form which goes to make up the composition has a simple inner value, which has in its turn a melody. For this reason I call the composition melodic. By the agency of Cezanne and later of Hodler, this kind of composition won new life, and earned the name of rhythmic. The limitations of the name rhythmic are obvious. In music and nature, each manifestation has a rhythm of its own, so also in painting. In nature, this rhythm is often not clear to us, because its purpose is not clear to us. We then speak of it as unrhythmic. So the terms rhythmic and unrhythmic are purely conventional, as also are harmony and discord, which have no actual existence. Complex rhythmic composition with a strong flavor of the symphonic, is seen in numerous pictures and woodcuts of the past. One might mention the work of old German masters, of the Persians, of the Japanese, the Russian icons, broadsides, etc. In nearly all these works, the symphonic composition is not very closely allied to the melodic. This means that fundamentally there is a composition founded on rest and balance. The mind thinks at once of choral compositions, of Mozart and Beethoven. All these works have the solemn and regular architecture of a Gothic cathedral. They belong to the transition period. As examples of the new symphonic composition, in which the melodic element plays a subordinate part, and that only rarely, I have added reproductions of four of my own pictures. They represent three different sources of inspiration. One, a direct impression of outward nature expressed in purely artistic form this i call an impression two a largely unconscious spontaneous expression of inner character the non-material nature this i call an improvisation three an expression of a slowly formed inner feeling which comes to utterance only after long maturing this i call a composition in this reason consciousness purpose play an overwhelming part but of the calculation nothing appears, only the feeling. Which kind of construction, whether conscious or unconscious, really underlies my work, the patient reader will readily understand. Finally, I would remark that in my opinion, we are fast approaching the time of reasoned and conscious composition, when the painter will be proud to declare his work constructive. This will be in contrast to the claim of the Impressionists that they could explain nothing, that their art came upon them by inspiration. We have before us the age of conscious creation, and this new spirit in painting is going hand in hand with the spirit of thought towards an epoch of great spiritual leaders. End of chapter 9 Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine End of Concerning the Spiritual in Art by Vasily Kandinsky Part 2, Chapter 9 of Concerning the Spiritual in Art by Vasily Kandinsky Translated by Michael T. H. Sadler This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine